Six days away from the start of the new League of Ireland season. Text in, well lads, why has there been no TV coverage or advertisement of the League of Ireland season considering it all kicks off in just six days time? That is the question I think everybody is asking, all right. Every single year. Every year, yeah. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It really, really is. We're, we're, like, we talk about wanting to do the best for the league and, and trying to, to sell it to the wider masses and all that. And we are shooting ourselves firmly, firmly in the foot before we, the league even starts. I mean, it's, I know the launch is on Tuesday, but even that in itself, why? I'm sure they have the reasons, but I'd love to know what the reasons for having the league launch so late in the day is. Like, could, could we not that try and... constant, you look at that this was a rugby week where everybody's talking rugby and you're trying to concentrate it onto this week where there's nothing else really happening? But ramp it up gradually over a couple of weeks. Do you know what I mean? Like build it up, you know, bit by bit. You can't just come out of nowhere with a, with a week to go. That's that's my take on it, but I don't know. The, the, I'm sure the powers that be claim they know best. My sense is that the league feels as though it's in a better position than where it was five years ago. In what sense? Financially, in that the quality security, is getting better. Quality? The f financially, it's improving slightly facilities are getting a little that slow increments but that it is getting better but like you've been there right in the front row is that your sense of it depends what club you're talking about okay it's you know it really is so so hit and miss you know you go through the clubs 20 clubs maybe it's a dublin thing then because maybe you have shamrock rovers who are obviously doing very good work and investing huge amounts of money at underage level and have good facilities out in Tala. Bowls seem to have really latched on to something on the north side. Pats, I think, are probably trying to start to replicate yeah, that you're, now. You're, you're about to get a barrage of texts in from the Cork City fans. And, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> look, their, their attendances obviously have been absolutely mm. fantastic, so you, you def definitely can't leave them out. Yeah, look, they're, 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 you look at the Dublin side of things, and yeah, you're right at the moment, they're probably all kind of in a reasonably positive place. Um, you know, if we actually look at the Premier Division season and, and, and how it might pan out, I think the one that every the team that everybody is kind of getting quite excited about uh, is, is St. Pat's at the moment. They they really seem to have put together a, a very, very strong squad. It's kind of, it's kind of after, if you look at it at the moment, it's kind of, Watford might dispute this, but because their budget has been cut back and they've lost a lot of players, I would say it's looking like 4-4-2. Four, four and two. Um, And look... Bucky's odds, which again, you know, aren't aren't to be all and end all, but that would kind of say it's four four and two as well. So, you've so you've, Dundalk, you've, Cork, Shamrock Rovers, and it Pats. looks as though Pats are now the fourth there. Where Waterford were the fourth last year, it looks as though Pats could be the fourth there. Um, then you've got your next four, which are Waterford, pa uh, sorry, Waterford, Derry, Sligo, and Bohemians, and then the two that just came up do look like they're going to have a real real fight in their hands to try and avoid being the bottom um, two. But the most important thing about it all in terms of creating excitement about it is it's very likely that we are actually going to possibly have a title race this year. <laughs> yeah, that's what does make it so exciting. So at the end of last season, uh, when we were at the Aviva Stadium for the Cup Final and we're talking about what may happen, it, there was a sense that day, I think, from talking to Dan McDonald that it's hard to look past Dundalk next season because Cork are going to cut their budget there'll be huge pressure on Shamrock Rovers. We're not sure if they can close the gap, but Dundalk don't look like they're going to lose any other players. And he was right, Dundalk didn't lose any other players, but they did lose their manager. For and that is the overwhelming question over this season yeah. as to how big an impact that has on Dundalk. Yeah, look, because of the European money and the way things were going and because of the strength of, of the setup Stephen had put together up at Dundalk, you were looking at it and going, yeah, these boys are going to dominate for the next four or five years, with the only question mark being that if the if they lost Stephen for any reason, maybe that could give everybody else a, a, a bit of a sniff. And I don't think anybody at the time, certainly if you're at the FAI Cup final, I don't think you, you would have been predicting that day that they were going no. to lose Stephen as quickly as, as as they ended up doing. So now Vinny could be Vinny Pert could be the next Pep Guardiola. He could be. But the point is we don't know. We don't know. And that creates the uncertainty around it as to, you know, his, it's his first managerial gig. It's the best gig in this country in domestic mm. football, and it's his first managerial gig. The pressure is, is, is going to be absolutely massive. As I say, he could be superb, and they could win it by more points than they won it last year, but at least there's a question mark. There is, and, and I guess there's a question mark about the dressing room as well as to do they put their feet up now that Stephen Kenny's gone and that everybody slacks a little bit, and again, maybe Vinnie Perk doesn't allow that to happen, or maybe Stephen Kenny's put in place a culture there that it's player-led at this stage, that the quality that they have in an attacking sense, that 
they're still there. And also, like guys like Brian Gartland, Stephen O'Donnell's still around the place. Like they've seemed to have good characters throughout that squad. Like a lot of smart guys in there. Absolutely. And that's that's the big that's the bit that you'd be looking at and saying, yeah, it is hard to see the wheels coming off. Particularly when, as you say, when you mention Brian Gartland, you know, somebody like that within the dressing room is is pretty much going to make sure that everybody is 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 at it in the way that they need to be. Um, look, obviously they want to try and keep the culture that was there, and that was probably the main reason for for giving the job to Vinny supposedly his coaching has been absolutely top top notch over the last few years but as a few other coaches have found in the last five six years you look back at, at how respected Trevor Crowley was and then he struggled at Rovers you know coaching managing they're just two completely completely different things he could be brilliant at it but it is going to be a whole new a whole new baby to him you know okay. In terms of playing personnel, so Dundalk haven't really lost anybody. Like the most interesting acquisition was Jack Byrne at Shamrock Rovers. The one thing when you look at all the teams and what might turn them into a title winning side is Dundalk still have Pat Hoobin. They still have an out and out goal scorer. Whereas when you look around the league, it doesn't seem like there's too many more of them. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he's I'd say he's very uh, very short odds for 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 goals or for top goal scorer at the moment. No, look, he's he's proven he's he he did it before he left. He went away. He came back. He's done it nonstop since he's he's come back as well. Um, I suppose you look at the other ones: Cork of Graham Cummins, um, probably not as uh, going to score as many goals again. Looking at Pats, Mikey Drennan seems to have had a really, really good kind of preseason. He's 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 certainly getting scoring a lot of goals. Um, Jack Byrne will, will be very very exciting again on the path from Chris Forrester um, back in the league is, I would say is 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 probably the one player that I'm most looking forward to watching again for the coming season. But I think most clubs again, you know, you were saying in terms of being in a better place, it's definitely in a better place in terms of quality of player. Mm. It really really is. I mean, some of the some of the uh, the names that are going to be in around the league and some of the young players in the league obviously a lot of them lined out midweek for, for Stephen in the, the under 21 okay. game against against the amateurs there really are some some fine players and the other ex, um, exciting thing this year is is some of the exotic names and exotic faces that we're going to see it's it's definitely um, Sligo Rovers is the place oh to be oh my god it's the most cosmopolitan like the United Nations most cosmopolitan dressing room we'll have, we'll have seen in the league in, in a long long time but even you know all around the league there's kind of a scatter of, of, of fellas from from strangish parts of the world here there and everywhere so there is and that can be so so hit and miss it really really can I mean just the the, the names of, of, of the two boys from, from Bermuda and Jamaica are just the, the Dante Leverock and Romeo Parks well as you know I from a bit of former co United manager lads from the Caribbean can make a good impact <laughs> very very true <laughs> very very true you yeah. Eric Levine around that's, here that's for sure he's, uh, he's still famous for numerous reasons <laughs> over in Galway <laughs>